Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is David Dibble of Kavikas Constrictors. Um, first to answer the question, no, it's not Kavikas Constrictors, it's Kavikas Constrictors. Actually, the uh, the W in the name, Kavika, the W is pronounced as a V, and Kavika is my name in Hawaiian. Uh, I was blessed enough to uh, be stationed on the incredibly amazing island of Oahu uh, for almost six years during my tour of, uh, of active duty in the Navy, which served from June of 1987 to June of 2007. Uh, I just wanted to make a very quick video because those are the kind that everybody loves. People start getting bored after about a minute and a half. Um, to to kind of explain what African soft furs are, maybe take care of some of the myths. Um, there's generally speaking, I found there's two uh, two types of folks in in the world in the reptile um, industry, um, or should I say, under the reptile umbrella, maybe outside of the industry itself, but there's folks that are like, okay, what is an African software? I've never heard of an African software. And then there's the other folks that once they know you have African softwares, they're like, you have African softwares. Um, I, I, I kind of like to play with the kids a little bit when they come up to the, the table at some of the vending shows and ask them, okay, are African softwares mice? Are they rats? Or are they neither? Um, and, and I'll get all the the looks and the inquisition, and uh, sometimes I got mice, sometimes I get rats, and sometimes I get the right answer, which is neither. Uh, African soft furs have their own classification. They are the natural food source for ball pythons in Africa. So if you have a ball python, what I like to say, and it's true <laughs> in my experience and that of many others, if you have a ball python at some point in the past, Currently now, or some point in the future, that animal is going to go on a feeding strike for seemingly no good reason whatsoever. Um, kind of talk a little bit about some of the more natural and understandable um, hunger strikes, feeding strikes, if you will, fasting, uh, you know, depending on your background, uh, that you might incur encounter with your ball python. And one of the most common is the dreaded thousand gram wall. Um, it's not a given, but it's extremely likely and extremely probable that your animal may stop eating for any period of time. Might be a few weeks, might be a few months. I can speak from experience, it may be several months. Um, but absent poor husbandry, and that's another video, but absent poor husbandry, absent your animal going into shed and any established keeper will know that sometimes animals going into shed will eat, other times they won't. But if your animal's not eating, everything's right, your humidity, your temps, like I said, I'm not going to do that other video right now, uh, and you drop in an African soft fur, in almost every one of those cases, that'll get your animal eating again. That's exactly what happened to me. Um, I bought a killer pied, a super pastel piebald, from the Cleveland Reptile Show, and very shortly, very shortly after bringing him home, uh, he just stopped eating. Uh, my humidity was right. Like I said, my, my temps, everything was on point. Um, I tried live. I tried frozen thawed. I tried light colored, dark colored. Yes, they can be that picky. Uh, I tried absolutely positively everything on earth and it just nothing worked. A friend of mine asked me if I'd ever tried an African software. I was one of that first group. No, what on earth is an African software? He's like, Hang on, I have just the answer for you. Packaged one up, sent it home, sent me on my way. And uh, I slide out the tub, <clears throat> dangle them a little bit, and literally in seconds, this animal nails it, and he's back up and eating again. Um, I'm not ashamed to say I was 50, probably 52 years old at the time. I call him up, bawling like a baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, again, given the fact uh, what African softwares are innately, they are the natural food source for ball pythons in Africa. They've got twice the protein, half the fat of any traditional Norwegian rat. That's going to kind of, I'm not going to do a whole care guide. I, I see I'm already up to almost five minutes here, but that's going to bring you up to uh, a couple of the big differences. And that's what question I get a lot too, is what's the difference between a mouse, a rat, and an African softwares? Um, if you're a breeder and you've got hatchlings, you may want mice. Mice are commonly used for brand new hatchlings coming out of the egg. 
Um, outside of that, once you get your animal off of mice, you don't ever want to use mice again. Uh, I, I jokingly but seriously refer to them as four-legged water balloons. Uh, the next step up is going to be rats. Uh, big problem with rats is they get so very, very large, very, very quickly. And again, maybe your animal's going in shed so it's not going to eat, or maybe something's going on. Sometimes they're just, you know, them being them. You put that rat back in the uh, enclosure. You should go to feed it next feeding. That rat can get too big for that animal too quickly. You've wasted a life. You're wasting money. African softwares will never get too big for a ball python to eat. Um, we covered protein. We covered the uh, uh, just the fact that they're incredibly nutritionally dense. Um, one thing that you'll see right here and right here and right there, right, right there, um, every single one of my enclosures has a wheel and hides. Um, I believe that that enables me to not only feed my own animals uh, a healthier prey, because I feed mine from my own um, collection as well, obviously, but it also gives me the ability to provide you with a healthier animal as well. Um, I am more concerned with the health and the welfare of these feeders um, than I am of my own profit margin. Um, I could easily, you can see, every one of these has tanks. Every one of these has tanks. You'll, you'll never find a rack, a rodent rack, at Kavika's Constrictors. Because again, I can't put a wheel inside of a rodent rack. And I want to be able to give these animals the ability to exercise. So that you're getting a healthier animal. Also, another thing that puts me aside from most breeders, most rodent breeders. And I had this conversation with a good friend of mine who's also a businessman. Owns a restaurant in a neighboring community. And he says, well, you know, once you sell a breeding colony, which is what I do, um, you're going to be losing business to that individual. Uh, and yes and no. Um, there are a number of new keepers, new breeders coming through the door at the reptile show, calling me, emailing me every day. Um, I want to be able to take care of my customers the very best I can. And if I can give you the ability to get away from paying pet store prices to pet stores that don't take care of their animals nearly as well as I do, then I believe that is taking care of my customers. So I think that's kind of the, the real quick, we're over almost eight minutes right now. Um, there's a little bit more to it, but I think that covers a lot of it. If you have any other questions, Go ahead and hit me up in the email um, or give me a call. I believe my cell phone is on the website as well. But Kavika's Constrictors is here. Not only for the next room is my ball pythons. I've got three pairings going on right now. So, okay. <laughs> they're, they're African softwares. I also sell them as pets if you're interested. They're incredibly entertaining. Um, but I breed ball pythons as well as African softwares. If you have any questions, hit me up. Aloha from Kavika.